I'm not going to talk about basketball. Nothing's uh, happened with our team in the last six hours. We're going to start the same way tonight. Um, any basketball questions uh, don't matter. Um, since we left shoot around, 14 children were killed 400 miles from here. And a, and a teacher. And in the last 10 days, we've had elderly black people killed in a supermarket in Buffalo. We've had Asian churchgoers killed in Southern California. And now we have children murdered at school. When are we gonna do something? I'm tired, I'm, I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences to, to the devastated families that are out there. I'm so tired of the, excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm tired of the moments of silence. Enough. There's 50 senators right now who refuse to vote on HR 8, which is a background check rule that the House passed a couple of years ago. It's been sitting there for two years. And there's a reason they won't vote on it, to hold on to power. So I ask you, Mitch McConnell, I ask all of you senators who refuse to do anything about the violence and school shootings and supermarket shootings, I ask you, are you going to put your own desire for power ahead of the lives of our children and our elderly and our churchgoers? Because that's what it looks like. It's what we do every week. So I'm fed up. I've had enough. We're going to play the game tonight, but I want every person here, every person listening to this to think about your own child or grandchild or mother or father or sister or brother. How would you feel if this happened to you today? We can't get numb to this. We can't sit here and just read about it and go, well, let's have a moment of silence. Yeah, go Dubs, you know. Come on, Mavs, let's go. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go play a basketball game. And, and 50 senators in Washington are going to hold us hostage. Do you realize that 90% of Americans, regardless of political party, want background check, universal background check? 90% of us, we are being held hostage by 50 senators in Washington who refuse to even put it to a vote, despite what we, the American people, want. They won't vote on it because they want to hold on to their own power. It's pathetic. I've had enough. That was Warriors head coach Steve Kerr before the game today discussing the horrific, tragic shooting in Texas earlier today that took the lives of 19 people now. Uh, I know in the video he said 14. Since then, the number's actually risen, unfortunately. And mo most of those are our children. And Steve Kerr is someone who has been affected personally by a senseless tragedy like this. His father was a victim of gun violence. And he's speaking from the heart, as you can tell. And with that comes sadness. With that comes anger. With that comes the raw emotion that you saw before you in that clip and honestly this is a moment where sports really takes a back seat to what is happening in life and what really matters and that is keeping people safe and most importantly obviously keeping children safe in the one place where they really should be and understanding that on this channel we don't usually delve into politics. We don't usually delve into these types of things. It really is important that we discuss one of the main reasons why we keep running into this problem of violence, specifically gun violence. And that is because we just refuse to deal with it. And that is specifically because people in power specifically choose not to deal with it. And I agree with everything that Steve Kerr said there. And if you don't believe me, and if you're still one of those people, because right, I know there's going to be a lot of people who take Steve Kerr and, and what he said today as 
a show who take it as, who will take it and and just run with it as he's just trying to make a name for himself or he's just trying to make headlines he's trying to do all these things that Steve Kerr doesn't need to do Steve Kerr doesn't need to say any of this to make headlines he's Steve Kerr he's the coach of the Golden State Warriors he's going to be in the Hall of Fame as a coach one day the reason Steve Kerr made this had nothing to do with Steve Kerr. In part, it actually could have something to do with Steve Kerr in that he, his family was affected by gun violence. And this is something that he very emotionally and very closely can relate with. But to say that, and people are going to say this, sports and politics shouldn't mix. And it's going to be the same people who go out of their way to make sports and politics mix. Promise you. Tomorrow, you're going to have people on Fox News. You're going to have people like Clay Travis talk about this, belittle it. And in all of that and all the discourse that's that's going to happen, one thing is going to get lost in all the discourse about basketball that's going to happen tomorrow over the, even this game. The one thing that's going to get lost it, it are the 19 people who lost their lives today, who were murdered today. And if just simply saying that we need to do something about this is considered woke, is considered wrong, is considered snowflake behavior, then I honestly don't think that that's the way to go about it. I honestly don't think that those people are trying to do anything to be helpful. Being helpful would be at least coming to the table. And that's what Steve Kerr was saying in there. And again, it's beyond sports. And the reason I'm covering this, yes, is in part because it's a sports story, but it's also a nationwide news story that is in a very minuscule way related to sports. And at a certain point, you got to make you got to take a stand and you have to bring notoriety and you have to bring your voice to the table. So, I'm glad Steve Kerr did that. I hope many more people do because something's got to be done. It's just absolutely it's just absolutely sickening what is happening.